one in three individuals are uh, experiencing at some point in time sleep deprivation in the United States. You know, we're talking about nearly a third of the population. It's a pretty big number. Getting less than seven hours of sleep seems to be pretty consistent that you're putting yourself and others at risk, like high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, and the list can kind of go on and on and on. And there's a lot of associations that aren't good, including cardiovascular issues. One of the big pieces of that is you can have a decreased awareness that you're not as mentally sharp. And accident rates in some studies have been shown to go up. One study done which compared uh, response rates to people who were intoxicated versus response rates to people who had some sleep deprivation. Uh, if you look at across the tests, uh, people who were sleep deprived uh, performed um, as bad or in many cases worse than people who were legally intoxicated. And again, it's one of those things where you don't realize it. You just, I feel tired. If you're feeling tired, the odds are you haven't had enough restful sleep and you're probably impaired and at higher risk for motor vehicle accidents and other mistakes, including things like falls and slipping. You're setting yourself up for a potential problem. Um, are there ways to get around it? Oh yeah, caffeine and the big huge monsters will can get you going and keep you going for a little while. But then as soon as those stop, you know, we used to say that's when you get the crash. You don't want to say that when driving. So the sweet spot seems to be around that seven to eight hour mark for most people, for most individuals. But you know, it's hard. Let me start with that. It's kind of like trying to lose weight. It's not an easy thing to do because, you know, uh, you come home from a stressful day and maybe you want to sit down and watch a little bit of TV or, uh, you know, have, have that glass of wine and, and try to wind down before. Well, you know, that's fine. What would you do? You expose yourself to a bunch of blue light, which affects our circadian rhythms, which is our internal kind of clock. Um, in a negative way, there's actually special receptors in our, in our eyes that help reset that clock. And we expose ourselves to this blue light, it thinks it's daytime when it's actually nighttime. You just had yourself a little bit of alcohol, and now you're going to decrease your, your sleep. Um, the restful cycle, even though you don't really know it, you might actually wake up more and don't even realize it. Um, so it comes to what we call sleep hygiene. You need to break some of those bad habits that we've kind of used as a way of downtime. So really the bed is for sleeping. And you want a dark room, you don't want TV, you don't want electronics, you don't want uh, lights that are blue in color. You know, having a set routine, having a single environment that's conducive for sleeping, you know, without the kids running in, without the, the dogs always there, without the TV on. And it should be, it should be quiet. Um, and it's something that you should actually work to train yourself to be able to go to bed, lay down, and get sleepy. Mm -hmm. So when we call that sleep hygiene, and there's a lot of resources to kind of help with that, um, but it takes an active effort. It's, it's hard to think about this and go, you know, watching TV right now and having that glass of wine and then uh, going to bed and keeping the TV on might be shaving off some years of my life. But that's exactly what you may be doing.